this video, we discuss the development and essence of the CCGHR principles for global health research. Accompanying this animation are case studies and a seminar guide, additional resources including a one-page overview of the principles and a booklet can be found on the CCGHR website. You may find it useful to have these two documents available as you review this video. Let's begin by setting the stage for what eventually led to the elaboration of these principles for global health research. In the years following the 2008 economic recession, the landscape of global health research funding was completely transformed. New global threats emerged, traditional funders reformed, philanthropists and corporations engaged, university programs specializing in global health mushroomed, and fresh priorities were set, all while pressure to demonstrate results and value for money soared. During this time, the 2010 Muskoka Initiative was introduced and attention shifted towards the post-2015 development agenda. These major shifts in the global health research landscape created an ideal space for examining both the foundations and the desired future for this dynamic field of research and practice. Responding to calls for action from our membership, the Canadian Coalition for Global Health Research asked, for those involved in global health research, what vision do we share for the future? Through research studies, we brought together students, researchers, administrators, funders, NGO representatives, and thought leaders from across Canada and low- and middle-income countries for a series of structured reflections and deliberative dialogues. Beginning with 2013's Gathering Perspective Study Phase 1, participants affirmed health equity as the core reason for engaging in global health research. They also identified important gaps in governance for this diverse and disparate field of research, asking what principles and promising practices should inform Canadian involvement in global health research. This question has, in turn, spurred the development of the project's second phase, with our focus sharpening on Canadian funding policies, our six guiding principles, and engaged knowledge translation. Along the way, we've discovered many things. This CCGHR Learning Guide to Global Health Research outlines six strong principles that we hope will increasingly guide Canadian investments and involvement in global health research. How did we arrive at these principles? Let's shift our attention to the methods we use to arrive at this place. At the centre of our work lie engagement and synthesis. Using this learning model to guide our research, we use data, dialogue and feedback to involve an entire spectrum of actors and different research domains in deliberation of our equity-oriented principles. With these cycles of engagement and synthesis continually informing and shaping each other, we convened a number of deliberative dialogues that ultimately included the perspectives of more than 300 participants. These dialogues were iterative, building on each other to effectively extend our collective reflections on shared values and ideals that could serve as the foundation for global health research principles. In these dialogues, we prompted participants with questions. What would we love to see happen for global health research in a generation? How do equity, effectiveness, and engagement resonate as values in global health research? What do these look like in practice? What are the implications of study findings so far, and what responses are needed immediately, within three years and within five years? Participants' conversations around these questions included a direct call for strengthened governance in global health research inviting the CCGHR to continue engaging people in dialogue about involvement in global health research. We designed a second phase of the research project in direct response to participant comments, questions, and calls for action. A central focus of the second phase was the elaboration of guiding principles for global health research. We began with a deliberative dialogue attended by content experts in both global health research and ethics, using a comprehensive environmental scan to stimulate discussion around an initial set of principles that could be put forward for further discussion and refinement among groups across the country and around the world. Using this preliminary document as background to these discussions, we asked, why is global health research needed? What principles should guide it? How would you use these principles? How do the preliminary principles resonate or not resonate with you? What changes are needed? 
as we began to focus more directly on how these principles might increasingly shape global health research, we looked to existing guides and resources that spoke to ethical and equitable engagement in research, grounding this work in the exemplary guidelines already available. And we now wish to acknowledge and honor the shoulders we stand on, including, among others, the Guidelines for the Conduct of Research with Aboriginal People from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the Ethics Framework for Research Involving First Nations, Inuit and Métis, as in 2014's Tri-Council Policy Statement, and the First Nation Principles of OCAP, Ownership, Control, Access and Possession, and Article 12 of the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. The principles we've developed do not in any way compete with these. Rather, they should be seen as a complement and an extension that global health researchers felt were critical to promoting research that was for equity. Further, these principles must be considered in the context of all ethical obligations of researchers or others involved in research, including compliance with the procedures and policies of research ethics boards and adherence to TCPS2. Now we'd like to introduce the principles themselves. In developing our principles, we heard consistently that equity needed to be the core why of global health research. As the essential theoretical frame for the principles, we follow the World Health Organization in defining equity as the absence of avoidable or remediable differences among groups of people, whether those groups are defined socially, economically, demographically, or geographically. We also appreciate Equinet's understanding of equity as it relates to the power and ability people have to make choices over health inputs and their capacity to use these choices toward health. Health inequities are often avoidable consequences of actions and contexts that disproportionately advantage some groups over others. These negatively affect human rights, including the right to health. With the overarching goal of promoting greater equity worldwide, six principles for global health research evolved from our studies. These principles are intended to inspire dialogue and reflection, guide what and how we engage in the practice, that is the daily or regular activities of global health research, to be mutually informative, to serve as a living platform to revisit the collective reflection on our values and practices, and to perpetuate ongoing collective consideration of the role of global health research vis-a-vis a more equitable world. While these principles are all equal and serve to strengthen each other, they may sometimes come in conflict with each other. Most of all, these principles demand that we stop and ask ourselves essential questions as we design, execute, and follow up on our research involvement, whether as funders, as researchers, as members of civil society, or as citizens concerned with the decisions we collectively make. How might we all imagine these principles informing our work and our lives? Over the next few minutes, we will introduce each principle and offer some questions that we think can serve to spark thoughtful conversations and reflection on what these principles mean for us as people involved in global health research in our everyday lives. The Principle of Authentic Partnering For global health research efforts involving research partnerships, there are often differences in context and power. These differences influence the ways in which a partnership can function. If we want to practice in equity-promoting ways, we must actively assess how the needs of all actors involved in research are both met and honoured. Our authenticity is a reflection of how our actions align with our equity-centred goals, ideals, and theories. We must ask ourselves how we might best construct authentic partnerships as individuals, as teams, and as multi-actor collaboratives. And we can draw on excellent tools and resources to guide us in the promotion of these partnerships. These include the CCGHR Partnership Assessment Tool or Chapter 9 of the most recent Tri-Council Policy Statement, both outstanding resources that can be used throughout the research process. Questions we can consider include, how are we fostering and assessing equity in this research partnership? How do we ensure that our intentions and actions are aligned in how we relate with and partner with others? And how can we effectively address issues of trust and power in research relationships? The Principle of Inclusion The Principle of Inclusion speaks to our efforts to ensure a representative ethos in research processes, particularly of those who have been historically marginalized. 
This principle, like the others, offers guidance on ways in which often hidden issues of power and privilege can be explored in global health research. We can ask ourselves, how do our research practices proactively promote the involvement and participation of people who are historically marginalized due to race, class, sex, ability, religion, sexual identity, indigeneity, and so on? How can we translate our understandings of solidarity into the global health research arena? How can we continually improve upon proactive, intentional efforts to be inclusive? And how can we invite contemplation of diversity and representation in our research efforts? The Principle of Shared Benefits Practicing the principle of shared benefits invites those involved in global health research to examine what the benefits of research or research use are and how these benefits are distributed. Importantly, benefits of research should be defined beyond academic outputs such as publications. For example, the results of a research study may lead to innovations in healthcare treatments, but how are these benefits shared among all involved, including communities participating in the research? all research partners, and those people affected by research processes who are not directly involved in the research project itself. Promoting shared benefits means making an intentional effort to identify people who may be more distally involved or affected, and using strategies to prioritize the benefits for this greater good. Let's stop and reflect on how benefits are shared, asking ourselves, how is each partner benefiting from this research? How are the benefits actually distributed among those involved? How can we intelligently challenge the culture of individualism in academia? How can we explicitly explore the ways in which power and privilege influence the distribution of benefits related to research? And how can we encourage a deeper contemplation of equity, that is, the needs of actors or beneficiaries, in the benefits associated with research? The Principle of Commitment to the Future In the deliberative dialogues we held as part of these studies, we heard people continually reflect upon an uncertain future. Their reflections were twofold. First, they felt that it was a promising practice to structure global health research beyond the limited vision of short-term project cycles, looking to build and maintain long-term relationships where research can serve as a tool to leverage equity. They also emphasized how global health research ought to contribute to a more equitable future for future generations. As a research team, we have been inspired by the seventh generation principle, an Iroquois philosophy emphasizing that the implications of today's decisions must be anticipated and understood as far as seven generations, that's about 240 years, into the future. We encourage those involved in research to reflect on questions like, how will this research contribute to a more equitable future? How are constructs and contexts of global connectivity considered in our research? How can we effectively think forward beyond projects toward long-term relationships about capacity, mentoring, and the next generations? The Principle of Responsiveness to Causes of Inequities Responsiveness to causes of inequities as a principle is essentially about our efforts to not only seek awareness of the complex roots of inequities, but to act on these roots whenever possible. We invite a practice of constant critical reflection, asking ourselves why and how we might do things that challenge, destabilize, or disrupt the roots of inequities. It may be as simple as structuring research questions in ways that examine rather than accept something like poverty as an inevitable contextual element. To pursue this principle, we can, for example, ensure that we ask questions about inequities and their causes as part of our literature reviews, context analyses, research questions, knowledge translation planning, or other aspects of doing or using research. The questions we must ask ourselves focus on the roots of inequities. What are the causes and the roots of the causes of the inequities related to our research issue? What are the implications of responding to those often complex causes? How can we acknowledge the avoidable nature of inequities? That is, poverty is not an inevitability or a product of geography. How can we actively respond to the implications of the roots of inequities? And how do we ensure inequities are not perpetuated by research? The Principle of Humility 
The principle of humility is intended to encourage the adoption of a modest, self-aware and learning-centered stance in research. It is about approaching ourselves in a position of learning rather than knowing, of seeking to understand complexity and diversity in norms rather than inadvertently imposing our norms on others. For this principle, our reflective questions are introspective. Who are we in this research context? How are we positioning ourselves in this research in order to learn rather than to know? How can we effectively explore who we are in relationship to the research and to others involved or connected to that research? How can we promote reflection and self-awareness, that is, how do personal and collective values manifest in decisions, priorities, and actions related to research? Now that we've explored the principles, we'd like to suggest some beginning pathways for moving forward. These principles stand on the shoulders of those already pursuing equity, and in our hope that others may now stand on our shoulders, we want to see these principles discussed, revisited, and refined so that we as a collective of global health researchers seeking global equity routinely engage in an active and open dialogue with ourselves and others. In contributing to a more equitable world, we must consistently ask, how principled are our efforts? And, when all is said and done, how do our efforts serve equity? These principles point to the choices we have as actors in a vastly inequitable world. As researchers, no matter our geography in the North or the South, we must change our approach and be held to account. As funders, we must insist upon the incorporation of these principles in everything we support. As students, we must ask questions and push boundaries, and we must learn about the root causes of inequities and how research is an indispensable tool to uproot them. As teachers and administrators, evaluators and policymakers and NGO staff, we must stride toward a world of greater and greater equity. And to do so, we must routinely question our intent, our values, our assumptions, and our methods. We, as global health actors, have choices. Some choices are more equitable than others. Some promote equity more than others. And it is our hope that these six principles will prompt reflection and contribute to informed, equity-respecting choices in our global health research endeavors. Thank mm-hmm. you.